What's up? It's Josh, and today we're going to be talking about iTunes, so let's take a look. Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh. It's been quite some time, um, but I'm really excited to get back into some video making. I've got some exciting things to talk about. Today I'm going to be talking about iTunes. So I'm going to kind of break this up into three different uh, parts. We're going to do a uh, uh, in how to install and overview of the key um, features of iTunes and uh, how to navigate iTunes. And then second video I'm going to do kind of a how to uh, get your media onto iTunes, whether it be from CD or file or flash drive, you know, whatever you have. And then uh, third video, I'm going to talk about syncing to your devices and organizing your content. I'm not really going to waste time. I'm just going to kind of get right into it. Yeah, so let's take a look. All right, guys, we are, um, as you can see, on a nice, fresh Windows desktop screen. Um, so if you've never installed iTunes before, uh, I'm just going to go ahead real quick and show you how to do that. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. Uh, you may have Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Um, those are both fine. Uh, just go to our address bar here, and we're going to go to apple.com. And you'll see the iTunes tab here. Click that. And then we'll go ahead and click the nice blue Download iTunes button. This uh, big blue button here is where you're going to want to download. Don't worry about any of these things. It doesn't actually need your email address to download. So um, pick a good place to save the file. I'm going to go ahead and save mine in the downloads folder. It's already in the downloads folder, so I won't go ahead and actually save it. But um, for now, that's OK. Um, if you're in Google Chrome or Firefox, it's probably just going to automatically download, uh, go to your downloads folder. So that's not a problem. So go ahead and click Save. I'm just going to hit Exit since I already have it saved there. OK. So go ahead and open up your downloads folder, or wherever you saved it, and go ahead and run the setup. Um, it's pretty easy. You just uh, go through the steps here. It asks if you want a desktop shortcut, and if you want it to be the default player. Those are OK for me. Um, and it wants access to your computer, so just hit Yes. Um, this could take a couple minutes. Um, once you accept everything, it's going to go through its thing and like I said that could take a couple minutes so I'll just come back here when it's done okay so mine's done installing so I'll just have it go ahead and open right up alrighty so uh, I've already had iTunes on here before but it may kinda come up with like a little welcome screen um, you can just go ahead and exit out of that I'm gonna actually go ahead and show you how around iTunes and how to use it. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the basic layout of iTunes and uh, some of the buttons on here so you know how to uh, use it as we go along with the tutorial. So the first thing um, that we need to take a look at here is the file bar right up here. This is going to give you a lot of control over iTunes so you definitely want to uh, pay attention uh, to this bar right here. Um, my The first thing I always do when I download iTunes is right here, um, there's a button that says Show Menu Bar. Um, I have it already up. Um, it kind of gives you a more Windows-based file bar here, and, and I really like that for iTunes. So that's the first thing I would do is hit Show Menu Bar. So you get, get it down here, and we don't have to worry about uh, this menu bar up here. Essentially, this one and this one are the same thing. It's just uh, organized a little bit differently. So I'll just go down here with some basic things. The first thing is the new button, and that's where you're going to create playlists um, and playlist folders, and it also has the option there for a smart playlist. Um, I won't get in very much depth right now with that, so I just wanted to let you know that was there. Um, here's two very important buttons here. Um, it's the add file to library and add folder to library. Um, when we get to uh, bringing media into your library, such as music from an outside source, um, these two buttons are going to be very important. Um, there's a library button here that actually lets you export your library um, and import playlists and organize your library and get album artwork. These are all things we'll probably end up using.
and there's a devices button here which you don't really have to worry about here's the home sharing um, that's that's important if you're in a home and and you all have iTunes you can turn on home sharing and you actually actually can share your music uh, across several computers um, these two you probably won't use open stream and subscribe to podcast so I won't even go into that and we're also gonna skip a couple things down here but you can also print uh, things as well um, such as album art covers, stuff like that if you're gonna uh, be burning any CDs so that's the uh, the main set of functions here in the file menu um, under edit you'll find the preferences uh, button which is also very important this gives you pretty much every option to customize iTunes possible from naming your library um, it kind of what you want to show in your library um, playback controls sharing store parental controls and actually it shows your device backups here but like I said um, we'll get more into detail about that when we talk about devices and stuff like that um, there's view you can show and hide different things in iTunes you can kind of mess around with that if you want it to look a certain way you can turn things on and off here's controls again that's not something we need, really need to worry about that's essentially the same thing as your controls up here just in a menu under store you'll find a lot of different uh, things for your Apple ID which is very important because everybody pretty much that wants to buy music or be associated with Apple at all has to have an Apple ID and I can talk more about that when we talk about Apple ID there's also an iTunes help and there's a whole bunch of user guides so if you're ever looking for uh, your user guide for your device or iTunes it's in this tab here okay the second thing we're gonna take a look at here is the iTunes media selector anytime you want to change uh, what the media that you're viewing in iTunes you're going to click this button here and it's gonna show you your different media such as movies TV shows and home sharing content so um, that's important if you're if you're like uh, where where are my movies stored where are my TV shows that's how you get to them right here um, iTunes has some buttons here across the top that we'll go ahead and talk about here the first one is the radio button if you've ever heard of Pandora this is exactly like Pandora you can uh, enter a an artist an album a theme uh, a genre and you can get basically a custom playlist kinda based around that theme or artist or album whatever um, the next four buttons here are all very similar it, they just correspond to how you'd like to view your music so the first button when you click on songs right now there's no music in here but when there's music um, this is the button that says I want to view just all my songs in one giant list probably in alphabetical order and then the second button here is the albums button that just basically says that we're gonna view all of our music um, by album listing and then obviously the next button is by artist, so you're going to be viewing by artist, and then viewing by genre as well. Here's the playlist button. That's also very important. This is where we're going to view all of our playlists. If you're big into creating playlists, then this is probably uh, a place that you'll want to know about. Um, the match service is not important to most people. It's basically a service that allows users to um, they pay a, an annual fee and um, basically no matter what song you have be it from an old CD or whatever they're gonna give you the highest quality version of it not something a lot of people use but if you're interested you can do some more uh, you can find some more info about that on I Apple's website okay so the um, next thing we're gonna take a look at here is the iTunes store uh, button here when you click it uh, it's gonna send you right to the iTunes store um, this button is actually kind of your go-to and from the iTunes store button you click it and it takes you there you click it again and it takes you back so to your music that is so that's something you're definitely gonna wanna be paying attention to if you're like well how did I get to the iTunes uh, store and now how do I get back so iTunes store is a very important place um, it, it basically has all the world's music in one place and you can purchase um, purchase it here you can even you can rent TV shows you can buy movies you can buy TV shows you can do just about everything in the iTunes store 
it's essentially like walking into a giant CD shop. <laughs> um, so I'll go just go ahead back to the library here. Don't worry about this button for now. Um, that'll become important later as we get into some music. The last thing we want to take a look at are uh, just the top controls here. Um, basically right here are your play uh, and pause button right here and your go back a track, go forward a track, um, and here's your volume slider, uh, and those are your player controls. Over here we have uh, the search field, so anytime you're searching for a specific song, album, artist, whatever, you can type that into there and search for it. Uh, same thing comes from when you're with in the iTunes store. Uh, when you search into that bar, uh, you're going to be searching the entire iTunes store. Okay guys, before we get finished here today, I want to talk about one more final thing that we we really should get set up before we go any further with iTunes. Um, and that is setting up an Apple ID or basically your, your personal relationship with Apple. Um, basically if you want to do anything in the realm of the iTunes store or uh, getting album artwork or, f or anything in that field, you're going to want to set yourself up with an Apple ID. It, it really is who you are, especially if you have a device like an iPod Touch, an iPhone, anything like that. They're going to want an iPhone uh, or an Apple ID. So it, if you've already done this before, you can just kind of skip through this part. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show people how to set up an Apple ID. So if you just click the Store tab here, um, and remember, like I said, if that bar menu bar here isn't showing, you can just simply show it by going down here and clicking show menu bar. So you just hit the store tab here and we'll go ahead and click create Apple ID. So it's going to ask you for uh, some information, uh, most important of which is your credit card information. Now they're not going to charge you for anything uh, unless you actually go ahead and purchase stuff on your credit card. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Also a side note, if you plan on purchasing an iTunes gift card at a local store or anywhere like that, you do have to have an Apple ID to redeem that code. So um, to begin, just go ahead and click continue. Um, they're going to ask you for their lovely uh, terms and conditions to be accepted. Basically, it's just saying that you won't do anything illegal. So go ahead and hit agree. So uh, basically, they want an email address and a password, and that's going to be your, your login and password for your I Apple ID. So think of uh, a, re a good password. I know there's requirements, normally uppercase, lowercase, and a special character, and a number. Um, it's also going to ask security questions. I know that you think those are dumb. I would recommend writing them down. It is very important that you have the answers to these in case you forget your password down the line. I would also recommend attaching a second email address if you have one, one that's different so that just in case you get locked out of your email address for any reason that you will be able to get access to your account. Your date of birth is also important to them just so they know you're old enough to have an account and also so that they uh, can use that as a security question later on. I would go ahead and uncheck these two boxes here um, which is you'd like to receive emails. Um, I can't really go on to the next step without entering my, perf my own personal information so uh, I can just tell you what's up next. It's going to ask for your credit card information and basically a confirmation step. Once you have that, um, you're basically signed into your computer. It should automatically sign you in. Uh, so in, in place of this little sign in button up here, you're going to see your email address and you're all set up to uh, use your Apple ID. All right, guys, um, that concludes the first segment of my video. Like I said, that was just more of an introduction to iTunes. I want to go in depth in the next two videos. So um, please stay tuned. I'm going to try to get them out as soon as possible. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me an email or uh, message me at my YouTube channel. My email address is askjptechnology at gmail.com. If you wouldn't mind just subscribing, that would help me out. Also, if you wouldn't mind uh, stopping by my Facebook page for a quick like, it's www.facebook.com slash askjptechnology. All right, so I will go ahead and get that next video out for you guys. Stay tuned. Peace.